Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, to talk about a variant on the conical monopole antenna. It's called the disc cone because it comprises a disc and a cone. In some sense, it is an upside-down conical monopole but not exactly. You, you can see if you watch the video on the conical monopole that there are some fundamental structural differences. What I'm showing here is the surface of your yard or the earth that does not have to have uh, copper plating in it for a ground system. You don't really need so much of a ground system for this because the cone supplies that ground system. The cone, generally speaking, should be, should have a slant height, H, that's from the edge to the top, roughly equal to a quarter wavelength at the lowest frequency on which you want to operate the antenna. The radius of the disk is somewhat less. The exact parameters depend upon the band that you want to use, the lowest frequency band. Now the advantage of this antenna, similar to the conical monopole, is the fact that it is a wide band antenna. It acts in some sense like a high pass filter. It'll work at all frequencies above the lowest frequency that you design it for. And just to give you an idea of these dimensions, if you want this thing to work on 80 meters and up, or 80 meters say through 10 meters, you would have to make this radius 23 feet 1 inch and the slant height 69 feet 6 inches and the mast would have to be about 65 feet high. That's pretty imposing structure. You make this thing out of wire mesh just as you would with a, um, with a conical monopole. As a matter of fact, I wrote an article in the May 1985 issue of 73 magazine. Do you remember that old magazine? Wayne Green and Company uh, published this article by me on the Discone Antenna offering a lot of construction details and I will provide a link to an archive of that article. Uh, at the description of this video. So you can go there and look at it. If you want to design this thing, say, for 40 meters and up, you'll have a little bit easier time mechanically. The radius of this disc needs to be 11 feet 5 inches and the height, slant height, 34 feet 3 inches. According to my article in May 1985, 73 magazine, the trick is constructing this disc. If there's a high wind, that thing's going to get wrecked. I mean, there's just about no two ways about it. But, uh, you know, in, a, in Miami, where I used to live, and when I wrote this article, that was where I was, there were rarely high winds, except during um, tropical storms, which didn't occur very often. Of course, it only takes one, right? <laughs> But uh, I, I built one of these things on a smaller scale for 20 meters and up and had it in the backyard and had a kind of a good time with it. My old Drake radios were getting pretty close to the end of their lives, though, at that time. Uh, when you feed this antenna, you feed it with coaxial cable. You can run it right up the mast, right up your supporting mass like a great big creosoted telephone pole driven into your backyard thereby winning you the love of your significant other and neighbors forever after. You feed this thing up with coax you connect the center conductor of the coax to the disc and the braid of the coax goes to the cone so the cone is sort of like a ground radial system. The angle of radiation of an antenna like this is very, very low, almost just about horizontal. So it's a good DX antenna. 
and it's omnidirectional as well, like a vertical antenna would be. So that is the disc cone. Again, I will provide a link to that article that I wrote in the May 1985 issue of 73 magazine in the description of this video. Stanja Belisco W1GV Whiskey 1 Good Vibrations Signing off for now, saying 73 just like the magazine and so long.